Hello and welcome to the Quality of Mind Transforming Transformation podcast series. And in today's episode, we have another uh, topic to look at in our Looking At series, where we take um, a range of common and relevant workplace and organizational topics and explore them through the lens of quality of mind. And today we're going to have a look at the subject of an organization's purpose, vision, and mission. So this is the kind of thing that an organization likes to create and then engage and cascade with an organization and their employees. So it's the kind of thing where you might have a, a, a one sentence, which is kind of the vision of, of where you want to be in the future. Um, you might have a mission of uh, how you're going to get there. And, and it might also in, include some things around sort of purpose uh, and values that you're going to abide by in order to hit your vision via your mission. And for those of you in, in big organizations, you may have actually been through a whole process of this uh, and it can take uh, quite a long time to actually get to sort of developed and then embodied. Um, those of you who work in small organizations, it might just be something that the leader and the co-founder comes up with and sort of runs past you. So sometimes they can be very formal uh, and sometimes they can be quite informal. Now, if you look at what's behind that, so what, why, why would an organization want to do that? What, why is it in all the business books? If you, if you do an MBA or read a business textbook or speak to a business consultant, they'll be suggesting that organizations get clear on what their sort of vision and purpose is uh, and how they're going to get there and what they're going to abide by in, in terms of doing that. Well, there's probably a couple of major reasons why. Um, firstly, so that everyone's on the same page, so that everyone's pulling in the same way to get alignment of what the future looks like, um, what you want to be, uh, what you want to represent in, in the marketplace uh, and internally in, in your culture so that everyone knows to be pulling and aiming in the same place. Otherwise, you might get sort of a divergence of what's important and strategy and different directions. So the first thing would be to make sure that you have a collective alignment as to uh, what you're all about. Uh, and, and that makes sort of obvious sense, really. Uh, and the second one is that um, organizations will, de will develop this and share this and engage people with this in, in order to harness um, a level of motivation um, and engagement with, with their staff, with their teams, so that people feel bought into something that's important to them. So there'll be a sort of um, hopefully in a values alignment so that people feel that what they're doing makes a difference uh, and it's something that's important. And of course, the reason behind this is um, then you'll get more out of your people. So people will, will maybe give more effort, more loyalty, um, they'll be more committed, they bounce out of bed in the morning um, because they feel that the organization sort of represents something that's important to them and that they can sort of join their sense of identity with that of the organization. Um, and, and great examples of that would be charities. So a lot of the reasons that people would join a charity uh, and even take uh, less money, you know, salary cuts, and maybe if they're in the private sector, is because they align themselves with the purpose uh, of the organization uh, and they feel it, it, it's useful and relevant for them. So the two reasons are to, to align people so everyone's pulling in the same way. Uh, and also uh, to increase the level of motivation and engagement and for people to perform at a higher level uh, of potential. So that makes a lot of sense, really, if you think about why an organization might do that. Now, often, um, in, in, particularly in smaller businesses, that those kind of purposes and visions and missions are, are kind of almost unsaid because it's obvious because everyone knows what they are. Um, they may be documented somewhere, but people sort of know what they are and they live and breathe them and there's a lot of congruence. Now, as an organization gets bigger and bigger, um, people can feel more disconnected uh, from what the organization is about or they might even experience some um, a lack of congruence in between what they think the organization is about uh, and what it actually is or what the organization says it's about but actually is. So then it needs to be a slightly more formal expressed uh, process. So hopefully for most of you, the reason why an organization might do this kind of thing uh, is fairly obvious. So 
let's get behind that a little bit and look at what's really going on. And as we always do on these podcasts, look at it from the perspective of the understanding of the principles behind quality of mind. Now, if you want to know more about what those principles are uh, and what the approach of quality of mind is, then you need to have a look at some of our, have a listen or to some of our other podcasts or have a little more, more of a read on the website. And we can put those links in the show notes for you. So, but let's go and look at the role of the mind then. So what is going on? Now, if you think about what gets in the way of people's clarity, obviousness, motivation, desires, flow, resourcefulness, all those things, it's really when we are not in what we would call in the quality of mind world in, in a high aperture of resourcefulness. We have... Um, a level of conceptual personal thinking that's playing in the system that's sort of getting in our way. Now, please note that isn't always cognitive. You're not always aware that is playing in your system. Sometimes you might hear it, you know, articulated in your mind as, oh, I don't know why we're doing this here kind of thing, or what's that all about? Or that seems a waste of time. Sometimes it might be cognitive, but often it sort of just sits in the system uh, invisibly, but it is sort of getting in the way of your mojo. It's getting in the way of your, your resourcefulness. And a little way you can experiment with that is just to think of some of the things that you love doing, maybe some of your hobbies or your leisure activities or what you do when you're hanging out with your kids and you love, and there'll be a real ease in that. You won't have a lot of thinking about it. I mean, there'll be some thinking about what to do, but there feels like a flow, almost inspired. Um, and that brings with it, uh, along with that ease, a, a sense of sort of resourcefulness, motivation, energy, and sort of um, innovation, creativity, connection, presence. It, it all comes with it on, on those things you love doing. Uh, when we really get in flow, uh, there's an effortlessness to it. And contrast that with something that you uh, you really don't like doing or something you find difficult or something that conflicts with what you uh, think you'd rather be doing, then that will come with it with the opposite feeling. It, it can feel quite difficult. It can even give you insecurity or anxiety. Um, you can get quite self-conscious. You can feel resistant to it. Um, it's like walking through treacle. So, what we're pointing to there is the fact that the mind can operate in, in different spaces, different apertures. Uh, and obviously there's, 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 it's a continuum. It's not binary. It's not, you're either feeling totally in flow or you're feeling totally stuck. There's a whole range of things. And actually for most of it, there will be an ebb and, ebb and flow and everything. But you can probably also recognize that certain activities, topics, things, uh, can feel more in flow than others. And that would be very much true of the workplace as well. And what an organization obviously would love to happen is for more people to be in that resourceful, inspired flow uh, than not. And what's happening when people are, an organization is developing uh, their sort of vision, mission, purpose, values, culture, is they're trying to get people to have uh, less personal conceptual narrative thinking in the way of that flow. So what they believe is that if you create a narrative that people buy into around the vision and the mission and the purpose and the values of an organization, then that's going to reduce the resistance, the incongruence within people, and therefore they're going to have more in inspiration and engagement and flow at work. And that's sort of observably accurate. But the key thing to notice here is the content of the vision, mission, the, um, purpose, etc., is not causal to that flow. It is a, is a correlation because the mind is the variable that's causal, not the content of a, a vision or mission. So you can see that very easily in the, the case where, and you might have experienced this yourself, where when you first joined an organization, you were very much aligned to what they stood for and what you saw uh, in sort of their values, et cetera. And then you didn't. 
and nothing's actually changed in what that organization stands for. It just doesn't resonate with you anymore. So you, you could argue that's a change of personal values. Well, yes, but, but what's happened is that your, the mind has made meaning about something which has created some conceptual narrative, which has gotten the way of that resourcefulness. But that is independent to what the actual content of the organizational uh, vision and mission is. So this is the key point here, because what an organization often does under the belief that it's causal rather than correlated is it tries to reverse engineer something. So it knows, well, pe people know that other people can be in this flow state and that is useful for business. So it then tries to capture and um, gain more of that flow of people by creating a narrative that it thinks people will buy into that everyone stands for and fits in with their sort of personal value system. So what's happening is that when people are in a high aperture and quality of mind, they sometimes find it quite easy to express what it is they love about a company or an organization, what it is that they stand for, what it is that's important to them. And when they're in that high quality of mind, that aperture, that's an expression of that inspiration, uh, that flow, that, that magic behind life, whatever you want to call it. Now, what they then do is they then capture that when the, the, this thing that's emerging from that uh, wonderfully high aperture. And then they try and sort of make that the thing that they then reverse engineer into the people that aren't really bought into it. So they're trying to take a piece of content, which is this expressed vision, and then say to people that maybe don't quite feel that, hey, buy into this. This will make you feel better, more, more flow or whatever it is. Now, it doesn't work like that because what they're trying to do is reverse something back into a high quality of mind aperture through the content. And the system doesn't work that way around. There's no causal power in the content of uh, a vision or mission. And again, if you want to test this out, you can see that because there are some people who actually can be in a really resourceful state um, and be quite neutral about what the organization's about. It, it doesn't really do anything for them in, in either a positive or a negative way, but they can actually come to work with quite a lot of flow, resourcefulness, um, creativity, connection. Um, and they don't need that vision or mission in place. And actually, on the other side, there's organizations that we've worked with who are actually some third sector and charity organizations that are almost at a detriment to how passionately they are attached to the uh, vision and mission of the organization. And that gets in the way because they're so fixed on the organization being a certain way and standing for certain things that they lose their agility, their resourcefulness. Um, they actually get quite egoically attached to their reason for being. And it brings about a lot of passion, um, which in some aspects you could say is useful. But actually, passion is, is, a, you know, is, is, a, is a concept of the sort of, in the way that this is happening, of the conceptual mind. And it can bring quite a lot of blinkeredness with it. And uh, people can get quite attached, um, emotionally invested in a particular outcome or way of doing something, which is not useful when you're trying to create an agile, responsive, uh, innovative thinking organization. So if you, if you pause for a moment and have a look, you can see where people who are very attached to the organizational vision and mission can actually be at a detriment. And there's people who don't really care about it and can still be very effective in what they do. So both of those things sort of point to the lack of causal power of the content of the, uh, the vision and mission itself, and more point to the fact that the variable to look at is the aperture of that mind and its ability to feel in any moment uh, in flow, regardless to what the overall purpose is and, and vision and mission. Now, I wouldn't then therefore say, let's not bother having a vision, a vision, a mission and purpose, because they are useful things to do the first objective, which is to align people so that everyone knows what's going on in the separate realities of the people around them. Uh, so they are useful at that respect. Uh, in order for you to understand how someone else sees it so that you can um, 
have some understanding of of what they what might be important to them uh and for the overall collective so I, i'm not saying here let's let's do away with them but i think the important thing to spot is they are not the be all and end all of fixing organizational culture or motivation or flow they are a product a symptom of it and if you have the people in the right quality of mind the right aperture then it's usually quite easy to articulate um, some kind of overall vision and mission and for people to buy into that if they are already operating from that understanding of a high quality of mind if they're not you trying to reverse engineer it back up the chain really doesn't work um, and people will see it as a bit futile a bit pointless uh, and a bit sort of you know a corporate waste of time because it, it's not working for them it's not an expression of their own high quality of mind it sounds like just something they're being sort of forced upon so really the thing for organizations to look at is just to press pause before they start diving into spending lots of time energy resource and money on getting the right organizational vision and mission and what they might want to do instead is actually look to equip their people with a better understanding of how their quality of mind operates because if they do that as well as another load of host of benefits they'll get from that in terms of well-being and performance they'll find it much easier to create that um, vision mission purpose values and culture and it won't be sort of as rigid and as fixed it will just be an expression of something that truly means something to people rather than uh, be created as this thing to try and reverse engineer backwards up the system so I hope that makes sense to people. If there's something in that that you are curious about, got any questions or it resonates with you, then please do drop us a line um, because we'd love to have a, a further conversation with you about it. Until then, have fun, be curious, and do check out some of our other um, episodes on the Quality of Mind podcast. Thank you.